As a full-time freelancer, you can probably imagine I spend hours and hours on Zoom calls with current clients and co-building clients and prospective clients uh, having meetings for hours at a time. Because of this, a few months ago, I went on the hunt for a quality transcription and summary service that would take the audio from a Zoom call, transcribe it, summarize it, uh, all using AI. And I found one I really liked, which was Otter AI, but the problem was it didn't automate the processes I needed to do or wanted to do after the meeting. And so I set it up originally for me to do those manually and they didn't get done. Yeah, you know, it happens. But I didn't give up there. I wanted to find a quality service I could use and trust to save summaries of meetings to my Evernote second brain. So I found Simbly AI, which has an automation integration at the end of the process, and it uses a webhook to do this. I've been using this automation for quite some time now, and I'm ready to reveal it to you because I like it and I trust it. And what it's going to do is it's going to take meeting notes, it's going to summarize those, and then when it's done, we're going to use a webhook to save those notes to my Evernote and to my calendar item that corresponds with the Zoom call. We're also going to email those notes to myself and the participants who were on the call. And I have a lot of comments from people who say, wow, these notes you took are great. And I have to sheepishly say, uh, they were automated. AI took them. I just created it in such a way that it would send them to you automatically after the call was over. So let's look at that setup. But first, my name is Andy O'Neill and I help entrepreneurs like you add time-saving automation to their business. And check out the links in the description for my weekly newsletter that I send, for the no-code tools I use in my freelance business. And please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you want more content like this. And hey, leave me a comment and Tell me what you think about the video. Okay, let's jump over here into Make and I'll show you how we build this automation. So first of all, I've got some stuff in here and we are not going to look at today. And this is this section right here. I'm going to pull this down out of the way. Pull this up here. This down here, I will tell you, is an extension of this. It uses the uh, summary notes to actually create ideas for my YouTube channel and for my newsletter. If you want to see that and how AI helps me generate those from meeting notes, you can click on this video and check that out. But for now, we're going to deal with this top piece up here. So I'm going to test this. I'm going to run my webhook only. And I've got Postman set up here for testing. So I'm using an, an existing webhook that came through for a meeting and uh, where I could send it over and over again. I don't have to have Go, go create a meeting each time to test this. If you want to see a more in-depth video on testing with Postman, uh, check out this video and we'll go in real, real depth on how to do that. It's a really handy way to test make automations. Here is our summary. So we have a summary. It says summary, summary heading. We have the summary and then we have an outline uh, of the items from the meeting. And again, this is a summary, not a transcript. So here is an item with a little dash here. Here's an item with a dash. And so what I wanted to do, I wanted to format the headings here bold and these bold, but I wanted the lines with the dash just to be normal font weight. So we're going to have to do a little trickery to do that. And uh, if this doesn't make sense, it's okay. I've got this uh, scenario blueprint on Gumroad where you can go over there and download it. Uh, for a reasonable price and just import it into your scenario. Uh, it's it's already in there and you can do that. So it's not, shouldn't be confusing uh, because I've already got it set up for you. But I'm going to go through the process so you know what's going on. So I'm doing a match here on the line breaks from the meeting notes and what that's going to look like. For each line, I'm putting some HTML at the beginning and end. So this is a paragraph tag. And if you're not familiar with HTML, it's not a big deal. Uh, I'll walk you through exactly what this means. So the, the P means paragraph. Style, we have font weight is bold. So that's going to make the font bold, obviously. The margin top 14 pixels. So that's going to get a little space in the margin so these aren't all jammed together at like single line spacing. I want a little spacing between it. So we've got that 14 point text and then this is our closing paragraph tag. 
And right here is each line from our summary. So what this is going to do is it's going to add this around each line that comes out of our summary. So let me disconnect this. And I've already disabled the, these links down here. The way you do that is right click. Like I get to enable it and then right click disable. So these will not run because they're disabled. So I'm going to hit run once. I'm going to hit run anyway. And I'm going to go here to postman. I'm going to hit send. All right. So here's our data. So what this one did is this is a fairly long one. It gave us a, it put a, put that paragraph tag at the beginning and at the end of every line. All right. See, this line has a number. This line has a dash. Put that at the beginning and end of every line. Now what we're going to look for in the next step is I don't want these lines with the dash to be bold. So we're going to find those lines and replace that text in front of it. So this is going to use a find and replace on that line. So what we're looking for is all of that HTML plus the slash dash, and we're going to replace it with a paragraph tag. So all the ones that have a dash at the end, at the beginning of that line or at the end of this string are going to get replaced as a paragraph tag. And those are all going to be regular font weight. So we're, we added bold to everything in the first step. Now we're taking the bold off of the ones that have the dash. We're also taking that dash off because it's kind of a bad bullet point in my opinion. All right. So what that's going to look like is here. And so we have summary is bold. The actual summary is bold. Line one is bold. And then right here is a one of those bullet points that used to have a line that has just got a regular P tag. All right. I hope you're still with me. That was a little complicated. Again, you can get this summer. You can get this scenario in Gumroad. And you don't have to touch any of that. Uh, as long as you're using Simbly, it should work just fine. So let's go on to the Google Calendar. What we're doing here is we're searching for the Google Calendar event that matches this meeting. So what happens with Simbly is you connect it to your calendar, Google Calendar, Microsoft Calendar. And so we're going to search and we're going to say, hey, go find a meeting that starts at the same time that our meeting in Simbly starts, because they should be the same. Simbly is looking at your calendar creating a calendar. And then when that time comes, it's joining your Zoom call. And then we're also going to look for a meeting title that matches the assembly meeting title because it creates it just as a mirror from your, for your calendar. So this is going to find our calendar item for this particular assembly event. Next, we're going to iterate through the participants and our participants here. We have two participants in an array, uh, Ivy and myself. Uh, and we're going to go over here and we're going to filter out. I want to filter out any participants that are me. Uh, so any at Weblitica email addresses, we're going to filter out. What we will get is a list of emails right here that are comma separated. And we can use those later in the scenario. Next, I have a math step here. We're going to take the meeting duration divided by 60 because the meeting is in seconds. And I want to have a uh, note of how long the meeting went. And then here is our Evernote note. I have my notebook selected here. Uh, here is the format. So what I'm doing is my name is going to be formatted as the meeting start date as year, month, day, and then the meeting title. So what that looks like in Evernote is this right here. So we have 2024-0404 and the name of the event. All right. Next, we have our attendees from our Evernote note. So we have our attendees, we have the organizer email that I'm pulling out of the Google Calendar event, and that is generally going to be me, and it has organizer in parentheses, and then the text of the other people who came. So over here in Evernote, we've got attendees, got me as the organizer, and our my guest. We have the scheduled start here, and we have a formula in make, month, day, year, hour, month, a.m., p.m., America, Chicago, which is my time zone. And the schedule start is 4-4-2024 at 1.30 p.m. Next is we have the duration here in Make. And that is going to be that numerical result here with two digits and a period for a separator and minutes after. So right down here we have duration, 59.10 minutes. Next we have the meeting notes. And this is a uh, H2. So in our Evernote, it made that larger. And then here is our summary that we added in here. And here is our outline. So you can see summary is bold. This is bold. This is bold. 
These numbered items are bold, but these items below it are not bold. So this just goes down through, gives you the timestamps of when things happen. So this is our outline or the summary. Also at the bottom, we have a calendar link that takes us to that calendar event, the location, which was a Zoom, and a Google Calendar event ID. And you can see here, those are mapped right here in Make. So that's, that's what our note looks like. That's how we format our note. Uh, the next thing we do here is we have the option to escape HTML characters. We want to say no here because we want it to keep these uh, H2s and then there's paragraphs and bolding in the text we're dropping into our note. So we're going to say no there because we don't want Evernote to strip those out. We have two tags here, call log and zoom call. Next, we're going to send an email from myself. Uh, we're going to do a split. This is going to turn those list of emails into an array for sending the emails. So that right now is going to go to all the guests. Summary of today's call with, and it's going to have a the, the event name from Google Calendar. Here's a summary of our call today, and there's the text. The same text we dropped into Evernote. So that will be sent. And then if, if I am the creator of the event, I'm going to do one more step. And that is, I'm going to add the text to the Google event. All right, so here is the original description. I retrieved the event earlier. I put the description back in there, and I put the notes below it. All right, so here is this calendar event. When we scroll down here, this is the information that I send in the calendar event by default. Right down here is our summary. So it's added it to this event. I can either go to the event, I can go to Evernote, and look at that or i can go to my email because i have a copy of my email all right so that is the overall scenario for sending uh assembly ai notes to google calendar evernote and to your participants via gmail if you ever need help building with make head over to weblitica.com and book a call with myself or a member of my team and also if you would like to see the second half of this scenario in action where i use chat gpt to create video and newsletter ideas and add those to my second brain. Check out this video and I'll show you how that is built. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.